honeybees. We see them every spring and summer, buzzing around from one flowering plant to another, pollinating as they go. By some estimates, honeybees in North Carolina alone are responsible for more than $154 million in crop productivity. They pollinate such crops as apples, cucumbers, squash, blackberries, blueberries, and a whole host of other North Carolina crops. In fact, just about 75% of everything we eat has been pollinated by honeybees. And that doesn't include the honey they produce. So, beekeeping is very important to the state's agricultural economy and your dinner plate. Most beekeepers in North Carolina are hobbyists, like Kermit Holzhauser. Uncle Foy was a beekeeper, and I was, you know, enjoyed that watching him as a child. I never was much allowed to get into it. Then uh, I was dating my wife and my father, and I had two houses of bees right up on the hill, a couple hundred feet from here. And uh, in 1969, I bought bees, and and we started from there. In the very beginning, it seemed like like everything else 40 years ago was a lot simpler than it is today. Uh, you pretty much your amount of work you wanted to put into it, you could make and do whatever you wanted to with a honeybee and, and you would make honey and do well. Kermit tends to about 50 hives of honeybees, some at his home and others at nearby farms. The bees, you know, the smaller hives will have 10 to 20,000, the bigger ones 40 to 60,000 bees, worker bees. Of course, each one has one queen and we don't know how many drones, but if you get more than one queen, you get a swarm. With all these honeybees flying around and taking off for their daily pollinating jobs, just where do they go? Well, when a bee leaves the hive here, he may be going to the creek to get water, 500 feet. He may be going up to three miles to get nectar. And that nectar, depending on what season of the year it is, you know, it could be poplar early on. Uh, right now, sourwood's beginning to bloom. We hope it's sourwood. We don't always get the sourwood we want. But the bee will pretty much range from zero to three miles in this area. And then like places like in the desert, they'll go even further than that. So um, really, we don't know where they're going, don't know when they'll be back, don't know what they're gonna bring back with them. But uh, uh, here again, they don't always work everything that's in bloom. They work, you know, what the, the, the bloom of their choice. Because most beekeepers in North Carolina are hobbyists and tend to only have a few hives, they don't collect a lot of honey. In this area, you probably would, would make, you know, 50 pounds a year. You'd have some years a lot better, you'd have some years worse. North Carolina is not a very high state as far as pounds produced per year. North Carolina has a lot of beekeepers. In fact, we lead the nation in the number of beekeepers, more than 10,000, but Holzhauser is always looking for more. It's a must. All, every man I know is getting older, as long as <laughs> we have to have replacement farmers, beekeepers, and whatever. I taught beekeeping at Western Piedmont, and I worked with a lot of people on beekeeping. Uh, you don't retain many of them as beekeepers, like anything else. You just have to keep working with the masses and hope you get several good ones out of it. And, that, and that's, the, that's what drives it. We have to have faith in what's coming with our younger generations. And, and, there's, and, and we need to teach them every little thing we know. And the main thing that we know is, if, is you need to be studying and reading and trying to learn all that you can learn. Because um, you and I, we don't know it all. But we need to teach them where they can find the information that they need. And that's kind of what we're here to do as mentors. Like any undertaking, beekeeping has its share of pitfalls. Even before called collapse disorder, the phenomenon that has literally killed entire hives overnight, the 1980s were a trying time for beekeepers as well. Uh, then we started, back then, then we had to start studying and reading and trying to figure out exactly what we were gonna have to do to survive. And then uh, as the years went along, we realized that our local bees, if they could survive and could be bred, uh, through genetics, then we that was what we thought was what we needed to do. So in long story short, I ended up going with the Russian bees because they are more tolerant to the mites. Uh, and, and here again, when, you, when we started with Russian bees, it was almost like we had to learn how to do beekeeping all over again because they were different from the Italians. And in so doing, it's a, it's a different bee. You know, they, they winter with a smaller cluster. They're more aggressive. But all said and done, they will survive the mite with a little bit of help. Uh, it's, it's a tough hobby. Uh, and if you try to take it any further than a hobby, 
I mean, it gets so expensive. It's, it's hard to, to um, justify what you're doing from a dollar and a cent standpoint. So the next time you encounter a honeybee, remember, that little insect is extremely important to agriculture and much of the food you find on your plate. Oh, one last thing. The honeybee is North Carolina's state insect.